Hello, my name is Alex Cohen, and I'm going to show you how to build a NeuroDebian virtual machine. It'll help to have the electronic version of our recipe available so you can copy and paste commands later in the process. Let's get started. First, we're going to install VirtualBox, which allows you to create a computer within a computer that will not affect the clinical applications and capabilities of your host system. This can be found at www.virtualbox.org. I'm going to download the Windows version because that's the type of computer I'm sitting at, but this process is almost identical on a Mac. Installing VirtualBox will require administrator access to the computer you are sitting at. If you do not have a process to gain temporary administrator privileges or are not familiar with these terms, you will need to discuss this with your facility's IT department or have them install VirtualBox for you. Fortunately, once this step is complete, the remainder of this recipe and all analyses take place within the virtual machine and do not interfere with the integrity of the host computer. To install VirtualBox, run the installer we just downloaded and work through the dialog boxes. You do not have to change any settings, so keep hitting Next or OK. Next, we are going to download a NeuroDebian virtual machine and import it into VirtualBox. This can be found at NeuroDebian.net. NeuroDebian is an open source platform for performing consistent neuroscience research and is the starting point for our recipe. Choose your host operating system on the left, and then choose a server close to you on the right. Finally, click on the Virtual Appliance Image link. This might take a few minutes to download, so feel free to pause the video and stretch your legs. Now that we've finished downloading the NeuroDebian virtual machine, we can import it into VirtualBox and get it ready for use. Open VirtualBox and choose File, Import Appliance, and choose the file you just downloaded. Again, the default settings work well, so you can simply click Next several times. We will adjust one or two settings in a moment. This process takes a few minutes to complete. Before we can set up the NeuroDebian virtual machine, there are a few settings we should adjust. Click on the Settings button, then choose System and increase the RAM to 2048 megabytes. If you know that your host computer only has 2 gigabytes of RAM or less, then leave it where it is. Choose Display and make sure that the video RAM is set to 32 megabytes and 3D acceleration is enabled. Note, if later on you notice that VirtualBox crashes when you try to load service models of the brain, try turning this off. Finally, choose Shared Folders and click on the folder with a plus symbol on it. This is a very important step as it creates a link between your host computer and the NeuroDebian virtual machine. Create a folder on your desktop named Host. Then, in the Open dialog box, choose this folder. Click on Auto Mount, then OK. We are now ready to start the virtual machine for the first time. Click Start to turn on the virtual machine. A new window will appear showing the boot process. Note that the default username and password for NeuroDebian are Brain and NeuroDebian, respectively. After a short while, the NeuroDebian desktop will appear, and a setup wizard will guide you through the final steps of the configuration. But as before, you can simply keep hitting Next or OK. The virtual machine is connected with your host computer and shares its internet connection, filtered through your institution's firewall. As you can see, there is a dock at the bottom of the screen where you can find a shortcut for starting terminal windows, as well as an internet browser. Via this connection, we can now update and install several pieces of software. Click on the Applications menu at the top, then Settings, then choose the Synaptic Package Manager. As mentioned before, the default system password is NeuroDebian. A package manager is how you install most pieces of software in the Linux world, as well as keep things updated. Click on Mark All Upgrades once you have cleared this dialog box, and then search for and mark for installation the following packages. Ginkgo CAD X, which is a DICOM viewer, DCMTK, which is a set of software libraries that help you look at DICOM images, MRI Cron, which allows you to convert these to Nifty. Ants, which is a complex set of scripts that allow for advanced 
normalization and registration. FSL, which is for many different types of analysis, and the workbench uh, from the Human Connectome Project, which you can search for by typing in Connectome. Click Apply Changes, and the system will start downloading and installing the latest versions of these packages. This can take a few minutes to a few hours depending on your internet connection. Occasionally, you may be asked to click OK or hit Next, so check in on the system occasionally if you can. FreeSurfer still has to be installed separately, so let's register for our FreeSurfer license and download the installation files for FreeSurfer as well. Go to freesurfer.net, then click on Download, choose Registration, which is step two, and follow this link to obtain a license key. What, fill in your own information, and after you are done, you will receive an email with some text that we will need in the next step. Find your, the email that you just received from the FreeSurfer group. Copy the four lines highlighted and paste these into a new text file in the shared folder we created earlier. Name this file license.txt. You will need this for registration purposes. Insert the four lines from your email and then save this file. Once that is done, we're going to return to the FreeSurfer website to download a specific version of FreeSurfer for compatibility reasons. Navigate back to the FreeSurfer website, choose Download, and then scroll down to where it says Old Releases Are Here. Click on the folder labeled 5.3.0-HCP, and then click on the file marked for Linux use that is not 64-bit. This will start the download process, which will take some time. After the FreeSurfer installation file has finished downloading, copy it to the shared folder on the desktop. Now that NeuroDeviant should be finished updating itself and the FreeSurfer installation file has been downloaded to the shared folder, we have just a few steps remaining to set up our virtual machine. Open a terminal window and input the following commands from the recipe. First, change directory into slash opt or option, which is a common place to install software when not using the package manager. Next, type in sudo tar-xzvf and give the name of the FreeSurfer file we just downloaded, which is in the host subfolder of your home directory. Hit enter and this will unpack the FreeSurfer file, which will take a few minutes. Next, we will clone the git repository of the Washington University pipelines by typing in the command from the recipe, which you can see here. These scripts are very useful for converting from FreeSurfer to the Human Connectome Project workbench formats, and for comparing your own data to the Human Connectome Project's large-scale database. Finally, we will download a few scripts and files that I've created to help configure some environment variables for you in this virtual machine. We'll do this by cloning my script toolbox repository from GitHub, as you can see here. Once that is done, change directory into that small script toolbox repository and go into the evn underscore vm subdirectory. Copy all of the files in this directory into your home directory, but you can see that there is just three. Once that is done, we're going to tell the virtual machine to load these files whenever you start a terminal window by adding the line source home slash alexrc to the dot bash rc file in your home directory, which is a hidden file which the terminal window runs every time it opens. Note that those single quotes are the keyboard key just to the left of the enter key on the keyboard, not the key to the left of the number one. Finally, we will copy your FreeSurfer license from your shared folder into the correct location within the installed FreeSurfer directory on your virtual machine. Note that we are using 
the sudo or super user do prefix command before copying these files into the opt directory as this is a protected location as it would not be good to overwrite these files on a general basis. Once that is done, we will then change permissions on that particular file so that we can access that file regardless. From here, you can now work through many online tutorials without much difficulty or start exploring your own data. Thanks for watching.